They are the leaders of two Hampton Roads cities, and tonight we bring them both to the table for a conversation about decisions that affect all of us. This is What Matters. Good evening, I'm Kathy Lewis. They are the two largest cities in Virginia, but their leaders haven't always seen eye to eye. But with the election of Will Sessoms in the resort city in November of 2008, there came a change in the way the leaders of the two cities related to each other. And tonight we're glad to have with us both the mayor of Virginia Beach, Mayor Will Sessoms, and Norfolk Mayor Paul Frame with us tonight at the same table. Thanks to both of you for being here. Happy to be here. Thank it's you a really us. different relationship in the sense that you know, I've seen you all together on a number of occasions. Uh, you, you joke together and you're you're very cordial with each other so how often are you talking to each other how I mean how often are you in conversation well being as I was the rookie mayor I had to call him constantly to get advice okay <laughs> uh, fair enough, yeah, we, fair we, enough. We, I've had the pleasure of knowing Paul when I served on council previously and we both started out at about the same time that's right on council mm -hmm. yeah and uh, back then we even were involved with the water negotiations the contract that was oh, way, wow. way back yeah. And uh, we got that accomplished together, and uh, we've had a great working relationship since then. And, and Will has an affinity for Norfolk. Which I, which I'm, <laughs> I'm glad to know he's, he's married to the daughter of a great former mayor yeah. uh, of the city of Norfolk, and so uh, well, thank you for saying he's that. very welcome here in Norfolk. And uh, it's been it's been terrific working with him yeah. so far. Good. You all have had an interesting time of it lately. We're going to get to all kinds of issues in the course of uh, each city's future. Uh, but the one that really involves you both at the moment has to do with these, uh, with with light rail and where we go from here. Yeah. Uh, we've had it's been a very difficult uh, holiday season uh, for light rail after some. Uh, pretty significant cost overruns were discovered, and of course, uh, the head of HRT has now announced his retirement. So that's the point <clears throat> at which we find ourselves. So as you have a chance to look at that mayor frame, uh, what is your sense of what's learned out of that and where we go from here? Yeah, um, first of all, just a little context. I mean, Norfolk is the smallest uh, uh, locality in the country to attempt to lift something of this size. I mean, and it's a very complex construction uh, effort. Um, uh, the rules that was that were in, imposed upon the city by the FTA was that the regional transit authority would actually con had the authority and the responsibility for constructing the project. The city of Norfolk does not construct it, and uh, we have not let any of the contracts go. We've not so been that was part of the bidding to get process. the funding. That that was, but at the back end, they said if there are any cost overruns, if if we're going to fund 80 percent of this, you're going to pick up the overruns at the back end. So, uh, you know, some things that we have learned, and I would certainly, you know, advise Virginia Beach is to be at the table with every decision that HRT makes uh, during the entire course of, of any uh, light rail system that's uh, built in Virginia Beach. Um, and we learned that uh, if the people are drawing checks on your account, uh, you better be at the table. Um, we were advised repeatedly that the project was moving along. Um, in pretty good order. Uh, we knew a year ago that there were cost overruns, which we came back and uh, tried to address and uh, put sufficient contingency in there. Um, but we also know that a lot of these new starts uh, programs for light rail across the country have experienced similar, um, you know, overruns. Um, some of them are certainly uh, are understandable. Uh, a large percentage of them, I think, we uh, simply there was no coordination of some of the contracts. Um, we really think it was due to some uh, poor management. Um, but I think we've learned a lot. Uh, the city of Norfolk is now at the table. Uh, we've had uh, basically our eye on, you know, on two issues now. Number one, trying to stem the bleeding. Um, the cost overruns are really a, what it's, what it's going to cost to complete this project in 12 months, 12, 15 months, okay? So it's not as though there were a check sitting there or a bill sitting there saying pay, pay this. So you can still... If you work hard, and we think we've got some people now who can do that, you know, uh, have an impact on what the real cost is going to be. Right. So our goal is to, number one, stop the bleeding, uh, get over there and get some firm management and a, con a construction manager who will try to save us money and to bring this thing in on a, a reasonable basis, which we think is about a, a, a year from now. And then, of course, as the mayor of Norfolk, you would expect that I would want to uh, negate or minimize the impact of the cost overruns on the city of Norfolk's budget. I think we've accomplished that to date. Of the $40 million or so um, 
uh, Pierre Soma, the Secretary of Transportation, and the Commonwealth Trans uh, Transportation Board have come up with $20 million. The federal government, there are at least two sources there, uh, one which will have about $7 million in it for safety uh, improvements, and another uh, $13 million, which we are comfortable that we can access uh, to get uh, $40 million. There may be some efficient, some, some additional funds at HRT that could be applied to light rail. So to date, as we sit here, it doesn't look like uh, this project is going to impact uh, the Norfolk City budget, these overruns. We'll see where we are six months from now or three yeah. months from now. We'll, you know, we're going to sure. manage it. But, you know, to date, I think, you know, at least as far as the, the city budget is concerned, we're okay. That had to be quite a moment when, when the fullness of that dawned on you, given yeah. the tough budgetary circumstance in which you find yourself at. Um, it, it, was, and it, was, it was sort of a late evening call from my friend Will Sessoms, who uh, the mayor of Virginia Beach had to call <laughs> the mayor of Norfolk and say, you've got a problem with light rail, which... Uh, you know, which was uh, hard to, to yeah. understand, but, yeah. um, and I think at the time, Will, we thought it was about a $25 million overrun. That night after I hung up from Will, uh, I was on the phone with, uh, with uh, the executive director from HRT, and he thought the magnitude was somewhere between 20 and 30 million, and that was about, about early November, November the 10th or something like that. And now we find it's, you know, 40 could go higher. Right. But, yeah, that was uh, quite a moment. It was uh, the next day we swung into, uh, you yeah. know, into real crisis control. I understand that. So how did you have the sense, when you called your friend Paul Frame and said, you, you got a problem here, how did that develop? Well, I think um, I would like to recognize Jim Wood, who's chairman of well, exactly uh, HRT so. and serves on the Jimmy City Council. And uh, he had picked up on some things uh, occurring there that didn't sound right and he asked if I would contact Paul and, and that's what I did and uh, regrettably it turned out to be worse than what we sure. anticipated but again I I truly want to say that I admire Norfolk first of all for you know starting in yeah. the light rail and you know I'm so sorry they're going through what they're going through right now at the same time, we cannot let this discourage light rail come into Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. A matter of fact, as you just heard Paul say, uh, the things that Virginia Beach can learn from the process they've been through, and I got news for you, we are learning. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I really hope that we will, you know, I hope you know that we recently closed on the right of way for uh, Norfolk Southern right of way, which would bring the line to Birdneck Road, our intention would be to bring it to the ocean. Wow, oh, that's so <coughs> exciting. You know, I, I think the nation is learning. Uh, yeah. Just yesterday in Washington, the Secretary of Transportation, Ray LaHood, um, uh, at a conference uh, mentioned that they should soften the FTA's stance on strict criteria as far as, you know, construction costs and then ridership, and that they should look to a new liberal, a more liberal model where they take into account livability. Mm. And, you know, the benefit that a transit system has as far as getting people out of their cars, but also as far as developing a mixed use, a transit oriented development sites, which is right up, is right what Virginia Beach is talking well, about. Well, you know, you're, you're playing right into my hand. Uh, Virginia Beach has got what we call SGA, strategic growth areas. Mm -hmm. uh, the vast majority of the planning of those areas is along the light rail line. Uh, you see town center sure. already, and it's just waiting uh, for the line to go by it. But along that line, we've got some tremendous opportunities for redevelopment, uh, expanding our tax base. I get a bit frustrated when I hear people talk about the number of people that need to ride it to be successful. If you're asking me if I'm excited even about the ridership from the oceanfront to downtown Norfolk, I'm not. I see it as a starting point uh, for increased ridership because I want light rail to go all across Hampton Roads eventually. But you've got to start somewhere. Where I get excited is the type of development that will occur along that line. I had the pleasure of going to Charlotte, I guess six months ago, mm -hmm. and seeing what's occurring on that very short line. And which, that's the, the latest one that's been put into place, right? Which right. had a, a tremendous amount of cost everyone's all Yes, exactly that. so, yeah. But, but to see what is developing and redeveloping along that line, even in these current economic conditions, 
is quite eye-opening. Mm -hmm. and, and I send people, I suggest to people that they go to Charlotte if they have the opportunity and just, you know, ride on that light rail and see what's occurring around it. Take the ridership numbers out of the equation. See, that's such a good point because I think people do really focus on that and then that question of, well, I'm not going to Newtown Road. There's nothing there, although we know that's not always going to be the case. <clears throat> it's part of a bigger deal, and isn't some it? Some communities have dedicated the revenue stream from the new growth in taxes that occur around the, the uh, light rail stations to help subsidize, subsidize the light rail uh, operations. Mm. You take that additional growth, growth in your tax base to help pay for the transit system. And um, a lot, almost across the country, unanimously, uh, universally, that's been the case. Also, to expand on this, the opportunity with light rail, and Paul, to his credit, has really educated me on high speed rail. I mean, that's something I hadn't paid too much attention to prior to being elected to mm -hmm. council. And I would sit back and tell you that I think we're playing catch up ball, which is very regrettable in this high speed rail. I believe that we're making the case that Hampton Roads is a stop. The region has agreed that it should be on South Side. I mean, the, the mm -hmm. TPO voted and said high speed rail should be designated over on this side. That being the case, light rail should certainly tie in with it. Yeah. And, and, and when you sit back and look, this isn't just, you know, this city, this, our city, our region, and the Commonwealth is desperate for transportation improvements not necessarily in roads. Mm. You know, we've got to have different modes yeah. of transportation. We hear that on the radio show all the time. It's not just about building new roads, although that certainly is a piece of it. Oh, it's a major piece. This, uh, this high-speed rail is very interesting because there has, uh, the, as I understand, a lot of the work to date would bring the line down the peninsula. And there is a body of thought that says, look, we're pretty far down that track, pardon that pun, but mm -hmm. uh, it's really a little late to come in and say, well, let's switch that all up from a federal government perspective. What's no, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. They, they they do have passenger rail mm -hmm. uh, on the peninsula. Um, it is uh, runs uh, behind schedule or off schedule at least half the time. I mean, the, they have some issues there. They clearly need to upgrade the passenger rail on the peninsula. Uh, they do have a relationship with uh, the CSX line over there and Amtrak and the Department of Rail and Public Transit. Um, because that was the only rail envisioned many, many, many years ago, um, that's where some of the folk, most of the original focus was. Uh, but the 460 corridor with the with the, now the cooperation of Norfolk Southern, which is the southern uh, corridor, um, really argues uh, tremendously that uh, that the most cost-effective uh, route and also the way to reach the great bulk of the folks here, as well as the military population and the and the and the and the, um, and the business community, is to bring high-speed rail down 460, and. Um, that's why the region, I mean, as a whole, unanimously came together. I think it was 21 right. to nothing, something like that. Very courageous votes from our friends on the peninsula, uh, you know, that concluded that the high-speed corridor should be down the 460 mm -hmm. uh, corridor that comes uh, into downtown Norfolk, very close to the Virginia Beach line, and and it crosses light rail, cross, uh, will cross there. If you're on the naval base, you can take light rail to the high-speed rail, get on the high-speed rail and go to D.C., right. or if you're at Virginia Beach or somewhere in Norfolk, mm -hmm. uh, you would avoid uh, the tunnels and all the backups you'd have, or the, or the, uh, the airports. Um, it just makes so much sense, yeah. the logic of it and the cost of it is so cost-effective. Virginia Beach is very excited about tying into light rail in Norfolk because we really want to see people get on light rail. We'll let them stay in Norfolk and have lunch, but then they're going to get on a light rail and come stay in Virginia Beach. Now, there you go. There you go. You know, this is so interesting when we think about transportation because one of the other interesting developments in the last month or so, uh, I think from a regional perspective, has been this conversation uh, that uh, that you mentioned, Secretary Homer, now former Secretary Homer, uh, who said, look, you, you folks in Hampton Roads really need to coalesce around this Midtown Tunnel when it comes to right. projects that are deeply significant to the region. And you can... I'm paraphrasing, he said it much more elegantly than this, but you know, you can prioritize all you want to, that's a great exercise, but you all really need to make some hard decisions about the Midtown Tunnel. I know you've been saying that, Mayor Frank, for a yeah, long, long time. Uh, the Midtown Tunnel, I mean, is on the table because it is um, the one project in the entire region that can be built uh, largely with tolls. Um, it carries 44, something like 44,000 cars a day. It is mm -hmm. the most heavily traveled two-lane road this side of the Mississippi River. Okay, we, we experience things in Norfolk that no other community uh, in Virginia, Northern Virginia, New York uh, experience. And, but the, 
the fact that the ridership is so strong that people will pay a toll that it will finance the construction of a billion four you know project mm -hmm. something like that and and uh, still throw off money uh, to uh, operate it and maintain it so um, um, the state's going to help have to help buy down with some taxpayers dollars the cost of the of uh, the midtown tunnel uh, it does allow the community to flow back and forth between the two subregions right. uh, more you know more efficiently and effectively um, where do you uh, it, see that toll eventually, and where do you see that? Well, they came in with a two to three dollar uh, suggestion. Yeah. It's they're now talking like one to two dollars, um, especially the with yeah. with the additional subsidies. Um, you know, um, it, it may wind up at something like a dollar and a half. When the region studied the Midtown Tunnel construction years ago, w we were talking about a sixty-five cent toll. I remember, yeah. And but um, when the state came back and and when the, this unsolicited proposal came in, um, the state imposed uh, significant expansions in the Martin Luther King Expressway, which ties up, which ties the downtown tunnel in with the with the the Midtown mm -hmm. Tunnel. Um, they've uh, added uh, the cost of improvements at uh, the Midtown Tunnel Tube, the existing one, and all of the uh, the downtown tunnel. Uh, they they've added in the operations and maintenance, which the state had been had been their responsibility since the two tunnels were created. So they added some additional costs, additional the scope got uh, larger, and so you know the project required a higher toll. So are you on board with Midtown as the key well, priority? Frankly, I think it's going to score very highly because mm -hmm. of what he just said. I mean, there's going to, the formula that's being used is quantitative, which I think is quite important. But I imagine that it will score right at the top. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I think more than anything, we want to see something built. Sure. Uh, and I, that's I the think great frustration, even as you talk to people in Everyone that I talk to, they, they need Stick to Stick a see shovel it. in the dirt and do something. As yeah. I sit back, and um, recently I've had the opportunity of going to the Pentagon and Guess what was brought up? Transportation. Yeah. I mean, I think we all realize the importance of the military to Hampton Roads. And when you start having you the Navy. You certainly do, don't you? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Let me tell you, when you start hearing the Navy say, you all have got to do something about the transportation system. And again, that's more than just roads as far as they're sure. concerned, which I, I, I totally understand. Then uh, just yesterday, I got a letter uh, from um, the Port Authority and uh, Jerry Bridges and saying, you know, they're desperate for improvements. And if you sit back, I didn't realize the port is the second largest income producer under, I guess it's next to Dulles. Right. And I mean, this isn't about uh, Virginia Beach and Norfolk or the region. This is about the Commonwealth of Virginia. Yeah. And, you know, and we got to address some of these transportation issues. And I'm going to have great faith that our new governor is going to to grab this and, and do, make something happen. Well, he's from Virginia Beach, he have better. you heard? I, I, I'm quite aware of that, and, I, and I'm really looking he, but, forward to working with him. Uh, you know, the Midtown Tunnel could be under construction in about 16 months. Mm -hmm. and that would be our first opportunity to really build something major here in, you know, a couple decades. And you know what everybody's saying who looks at this thing is, if, if we don't get this done and come together and get this thing going, yeah. then around the rest of the state we look like we can't make up our minds can't settle on something and then you know the rest of the state sort of says well why, why, why are we going to give you money well, to do something well, to help people I think, can't make up your mind. I think that's been an issue that yeah. certainly was brought to my attention very quickly um, after you know getting elected you know folks we got to come together and, and get behind some projects we're giving excuses to not get funded right, right. and uh, as you know it's so competitive for the few dollars that are there. So do you have the sense that the that the citizens that you represent in Norfolk and in Virginia Beach, do you have the sense that they understand that there are some issues that you will need to advocate or support that that will not necessarily have a direct and immediate impact on them? I'm thinking about the Midtown Tunnel okay. for example. I mean, well, well, well see this is where I, I think the Midtown Tunnel would be a benefit to Virginia Beach. But it's a story you have to, because it's not in the Virginia Beach border, it's a, oh, it's a leadership sure. story you have to tell, right? Yeah, but a lot of people from Virginia Beach use the Midtown Tunnel, yeah. including myself. Right. Uh, you know, uh, you know I, I would just sit back and tell you that I, I believe people really want to see a way to move people quicker and better in yeah. the region. And uh, they acknowledge something's got to happen. And they also acknowledge you can't send seven projects up there that are worth $25 billion sure. and find the funding for it. Yeah, That's right. not realistic. True right. enough, true enough. Uh, Waterside. Right. Ooh. 
Um, I'll let you tell you. <laughs> yeah, um, it's um, it, it's a, a grand old lady, and uh, it's over 25 years old, and it was has <clears throat> been a great uh, venture uh, for the city of Norfolk. Um, it was brought really to us. Really initiated the, re the it, renovation and the very much responsible yeah. for the you know the revitalization of, of downtown. Um, it is what's called a festival marketplace. Uh, there was a series. There were a series of them built across the country. Jim Rouse was the architect right. of these many many years ago. They were you know a lot of fun and they jump started some you know some downtowns. But it's an economic engine or an economic model with all of the open space and all of the, the common space and all the, the heating and the maintenance requirements of a festival marketplace as as a economic entity, as a cell, it, it didn't work very well. Mm. Uh, they always required subsidies. Um, we've, we've had to reinvent Waterside two or three times. Um, it started out as, uh, you know, restaurants and some and retail. We knew that when we opened the MacArthur Center, uh, that um, it, that it could not compete as a retail center. Sure. So we reinvented Waterside after just before the MacArthur Center opened, to be more of an entertainment establishment. And now entertainment has moved, at least in the city of Norfolk, down Granby Street. And some of that entertainment that was there is out at the town center. To be frank about it. And so, uh, the, some of the entertain the entertainment establishments that were there, started looking for different types of audiences, and some of it got pretty rough. And uh, you know the, the citizens of Norfolk have a have a great love uh, for Waterside, and it has uh, not been uh, uh, you know used to its best use here. Beautiful so, piece of property. So it, what it's do, a great you, piece of property. Um, the city council discussed it at some length at its uh, retreat several months ago. Um, the manager has prepared a survey that's mm -hmm. going to go out widely, distributed to the public, till we get as many ideas as possible. Um, it's it's a it's a little tenuous to deal with because we have tenants who are in there right now. There's a, a I looked at it the other day. There's one a, one tenant who has a lease to 2017. Wow. It's not like we could come in there yeah. tomorrow and flatten it or, or sure. you know, redesign the whole thing. Or I mean, we have to respect the the number of leases that are there. Uh, we have to deal with those folks as well because we have commitments with them. But at the same time, we have to plan for a whole new future for Waterside. Yeah. And we have to engage the public extensively. I got a very thoughtful letter the other day from someone who says, "Look, why don't you just, you know, appoint a uh, commission of, of citizens, take all the politicians and, uh, and take all yeah. the real estate agents and all the developers out of it, and just see, you know, and see if they can come up with some ideas. Let them hold kind of hold idea. some meetings and come back to you." And then, you know, work its way through the system. And well, so. I tell you, when we talk about this on our radio show, you know what people, this is the, there are different things people say, but the one they say more than anything else is a fish market and a farmer's market and condos upstairs. I'm just, I'm just saving you some money there and just bringing you that little <laughs> bit of information. So. Okay. Not qualitative research. I mean, no. sorry, not quantitative, but it, qualitative. It's, that's what it that was, way. and that's what yeah. didn't work. I mean, there was, the, yeah, the, the nostalgia you know. for that is, you know, it may it may work in the future if it's correctly positioned. I hear that people really believe, you know, Norfolk should have a great seafood restaurant in downtown, and we That's have some good restaurants. Hearing, yeah. But they want to go out, sit out on the water, sure, and you know, have that experience. Hearing, yeah. And you know, I mean, I'm all for that too. Yeah, you're right. We did have a seafood market here in the beginning, as I yeah. remember. There was a little bit of with Phillips, and That's we had. That's right, and we modeled had, very much on the inner inner harbor kind of concept in Baltimore. It was the same outfit. It does not smell good. That's, yeah. that's the thing. It just does not smell good. Uh, well, so as you look to the future, uh, uh, if you both continue to be elected, I know you have a little, you have some opposition from a couple right. of folks this sure. time around. When are you back up again? Years. You've got three more years to think about it, worry about it, whatever. Um, how do you see this? Well, uh, that's a conversation I think we'll bring back and have another day. I think I think that's what we'll do. How about that? Thank you all both for being with us. I really appreciate your being here, and uh, it, it, it's nice to nice to see this happening. I'll be back in a moment with a final thought. Now that the embattled head of Hampton Roads Transit has announced his retirement, it's good to see Mayor Will Sessoms restore his support for light rail to the beach. It's important to separate this managerial crisis from the potential of light rail itself, and many people believe that light rail has not a hope of being successful unless it lives up to its promise as more than just a starter line 
just the start of a system that may eventually extend throughout the region, and it's important to think about it in just that way. The cost overruns on light rail are dreadful, no question about it. It's fair to say that public agencies are served by boards and that boards are charged with providing strategic direction and the hiring and firing of senior management. But they're not charged with monitoring every single detail of a nine-figure, highly technical project because they just don't have the expertise to do that kind of oversight. But there is one tool that boards have that can keep all the parties from getting into too much trouble. It's a little thing called signing authority. How big a check is the head of the agency authorized to sign by his or herself? For checks beyond a certain, usually small amount, most organizations require a board member's signature. For example, in the nonprofit where I'm very pleased to serve as the executive, I can sign a check of up to $500. Anything over that requires my signature and that of my board treasurer. I think it's a check and balance system that works for everybody. It keeps everybody from getting in too much trouble. So what would be interesting to me is what kind of signing authority the HRT staff has. My guess is that's a question those independent auditors will be asking as well. Because if you set that signing authority low enough, and you have to get other people's signatures on your agency's checks, chances are good that you'll have to explain why you need the money. That's not a bad exercise especially when the money belongs to all of us. There are lots of ways that you can be in touch with us here at What Matters. Email us, whatmatters at whro.org. Visit us at whatmatters.tv. You can find us on Facebook as well, and you can watch any of our past programs at our website. Of course, you can write to us here at the station, 5200 Hampton Boulevard, and you can also sign up for our weekly EBIT, where as soon as we know what we're working on, we'll let you know what we're working on. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Friday night for another look at What Matters.